Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bison Track YouTube channel. My name is Rob. Today we have a fun video that's going to save you some time and hopefully save you some money. We're gonna talk about how to recolor your leathers at home, whether you have crash damage or you just wanna change a color on your leathers for your gloves. It's super simple, it's inexpensive, and it doesn't require a whole lot of expertise, just patience. And uh, actually it's a pretty fun job. Now before we get started, I wanna talk about a couple of different methods of uh, applying the paint on your leather. Now, the first way to do it is an airbrush. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm not going to get into the tutorial on how to use an airbrush for this job. Uh, pretty much, if you know how to operate an airbrush or a small HVLP gun, uh, you can apply the paint using both of those um, methods. But most of you are going to use a brush and actually track side, this is what I prefer to use. I use the airbrush sometimes at home but frankly, I try not to do much repair here at home. I am usually trackside working on emergency jobs, and that's where this bristle brush really comes into play. It's a nice, soft, angelus brush. In fact, I have a whole kit of different shapes and uh, angles and sizes that we use to get into different places on the gear. As you can see here, I have a whole box full of paints, all the colors of the rainbow, and uh, you can actually mix these paints together and make custom colors, but I'm gonna show you something here. I have two different brands of paint. I actually have some Angelus paint. Uh, this is good stuff. And I also have Master's Touch acrylic paint. It's pretty much available in Hobby Lobby and Michaels and that sort of thing. The Angelus stuff is expensive. You have to order it online generally. But really, uh, I found that the Master's Touch works really well and it's very durable. And like I said, you can buy it at Michaels or Hobby Lobby. It's inexpensive. And uh, really, if you're applying this paint with a brush, this is a little bit thicker. And for a brush, it works really well just to kind of uh, stroke that on to the leather. So we're gonna talk about that, of course, more in depth. But first, we're gonna get started with some crash damage. So let's talk about a suit that I have here and what you would look for in crash damage, what you can expect, and then how to repair it. All right, everybody, so I am back and I've got the suits laid out here on the table. I have two different suits, two different situations, and um, I'm gonna show you what we can do at home to clean your suit up with similar damage to these. Now, the first thing we're gonna do, of course, is inspect the suits and um, assess the type of damage that we have. Now, you may have linked to this video via another video that we have, which talks about how to inspect your gear overall following a crash. There's lots of different types of crashes. Every crash is unique. But in that video, we talked about the different types of crashes, different situations, and how they affect your gear. So that helps you, um, of course, inspect it once you get off the track following an incident. And you can make sure that you're safe when you go back out for the next one. But here, we're talking about cosmetics, of course. Actually, on this one, what I've done is I, I went ahead and jumped the gun. I repaired half of the torso of this suit. So the left side has been uh, touched up and cleaned up already. The right side I cleaned, but I haven't colored yet. So you can see a little bit of differentiation in color. That is because I used a deglazer on this side and I've cleaned it, um, but I haven't repainted it yet. In addition, you can see that the color on this fluorescent uh, lettering here is faded, and that's because the deglazer removed the fluorescent print. On the left side of the torso, I've recolored the O and the N and recolored the blue here, and you can see that it looks a lot better. This other item that we have here, this other suit, this is my son Carter, it's his former suit. He crashed it one time, and um, you can see here on the butt, just black leather, but it's discolored. And I'm gonna show you a few different methods to uh, repairing black. And it could be as simple as just cleaning it and conditioning it. So first thing we're gonna do is look at this blue and yellow suit, assess it, and we're gonna do some recoloring on that. Once we're done with these two things, I'm gonna show you how to actually change a color on items. I have Carter's gloves here, my son Carter, his Thor.2 gloves. We're gonna change this gold to some different colors and uh, we're gonna work with just Brussels britches. Brussels, <laughs> Brussels britches. That's what we're gonna work with today. Bristle brushes. That's what we're going to use for all this stuff today. Super simple, you do it right at home. You don't need any expertise at all. So, first thing, let's look at this blue suit. Okay, so we've got the suit laid out here. We can see that we have scuffs on pretty much every blue panel on the suit. And uh, then we have, of course, some whites and grays. But we're gonna focus on the blue for this video. 
And also, we're going to recolor some of this yellow. We'll talk a little bit about that. So first, when it comes to blues, I am fortunate that I have a whole kit of colors here. And what I can do is just look in my tackle box and pick out the colors that are closest and just match them up. And in this case, this color is almost exactly ultramarine blue from Master's Touch. Um, this, this blue here is just a little bit too dark. So we're gonna throw that back in the tackle box. And what we would do first, we've got that color now chosen. We're gonna set it aside, but first thing we would do is deglaze the leather. This is a very important step because like painting a car where you wanna sand the paint before you apply the new paint, uh, this deglazer is basically going to open up that factory surface. It's going to remove any of the glaze, any of the oils, uh, that were applied your, your left over from the tanning and coloring process uh, at the factory. And when you deglaze the leather, you don't need to just bear down on it. Just uh, apply some onto a, a rag and then have a dry rag handy. Just kind of medium pressure, circular motion, and then wipe, wipe with the dry rag and that's going to pull the remainder off. And actually what you will feel is that the surface becomes tacky, a little bit sticky, and that's a good thing. Actually, you could paint right over that after you let it dry a little bit. Uh, you will have some adhesion there. But in addition to that, you may grab some 400 or 600 grit sandpaper and just kind of key up the surface that you're going to be painting. So again, just like a car, by making those microscopic scratches in the surface of the leather, you're giving more surface area for that new paint to bite to, and therefore that surface is going to last a little bit longer. Angelus Leather Preparer and Deglazer. And I'm going to show you here what this does. So the first thing, we're going to use the wet rag and wipe, and then we're going to pull off with the dry rag. And um, what you would see here, it's difficult to see on video, but we're pulling the black, the asphalt marks off the suit, and we're also taking the upper layer of paint off the suit. So keep in mind, uh, this deglazer will remove a lot of scuffs, and you can see it's, uh, it's looking better already, but it's also going to pull the color out of the suit. So you just want to be aware of that. <clears throat> and you can see maybe on the video, I doubt you're going to be able to see this, but the surface dulls and the color changes because you are lifting color. But you do want to get the black out of there because um, it's going to show through. This color is... Uh, semi-opaque so I mean all these colors are pretty much except for black they're pretty much just gonna show uh, anything underneath right through so we want to let that dry for a while <clears throat> while we're doing that we can move on to a different section and just for comparison's sake what I will do is come down here to this fluorescent knee a lot of this is just dirt and asphalt Gonna pull off as much as we can but the fluorescent is thin um, and it's going to come off a lot easier you will see so you want to be gentle with the fluorescent because you know save as much of the factory finish as you can um, you can see there here we are to white but saving that factory finish does allow you to kind of blend the color out a little bit and uh, you know, again, you don't want to see the, the marks underneath the, uh, the paint, obviously. So anything dark like this is definitely going to show under the fluorescent. We'll need to go over that with some white before we recolor it. But anyway, we've got that part cleaned up. Now let's move back over to this other leg here. I really like this Angelus uh, Deglazer product. I've used some different things. And oh, by the way... If you don't have the deglazer, which you pretty much have to buy online, uh, you can use rubbing alcohol. Um, you can, you can uh, reduce it down and, and use rubbing alcohol. You can see how much, though, that this deglazer, when it pulls the black marks off of this, it really just starts looking better right away. Um, and so the rubbing alcohol is going to accomplish a lot of the same stuff here. But uh, this deglazer product is really good. I swear by it. So it's, it's probably nice if you're going to be doing some of this at home yourself in the future. Go ahead and get a bottle of this. Just order it and have it on hand. And a lot of times with the lettering, especially if it's white, 
The deglazer takes the asphalt marks off and it starts just looking really, really good. And you can see that there already, that O, compared to everything else, looks really nice. And all I've done is use the deglazer with very light pressure. I'm just letting the product do the work, scrubbing a little bit, <clears throat> but uh, not with a lot of force. And this has really done a lot. So this touch up on the O and the N are going to be pretty simple. But over here on the S, well, that cleaned up a lot more than I thought it would just right there. But um, a lot of this, the color is just gone. So you don't really necessarily need to deglaze it. We're going to sand it anyway and, uh, and key it up. So we don't necessarily need to deglaze it. At any rate, here are the legs. About ready for paint. And you can see just having the black off of them made them look a lot better. Now, I've got a piece of paper here. This is 400 grit. It's 400, 600, whatever. Um, I don't really need to sand this. There are no real rough areas on the legs. Um, there is one, I guess, spot of color here that's coming up. Just a very surface of the hide. And I, I can kind of pick that off. You can use a razor blade and, uh, and slice them off or just pick them off. But you don't want those things under the paint necessarily just because it's going to look bad. Um, up here on the chest, we've got a little bit of scuffage. So I'm going to sand that down. Again, not using a lot of pressure, just kind of light. I'm going to knock this stuff off of the surface. Little roly, uh, roly polies there on the on the surface from the slide, so that we have a nice smooth surface to adhere to. Um, generally speaking, if you kind of brush it off, that's good. But if you want to go back over, reclean it, not a bad idea. <clears throat> Especially if you do a lot of sanding, go ahead and clean it. But uh, there we go. So let's go ahead and apply some blue. Okay, so now what we have here, like I said, I've completed this side of the suit already. And actually, this side had a lot more damage than uh, the right side did. But you can see it looks better. And what we're going to do is um, I'm just going to use this Master Touch Acrylic Ultramarine. And I'm going to apply it right to the brush. Actually, I'm going to use a different brush. Uh, this one we're going to save for the letters. And I'm going to use this thicker brush. It's got more coverage area. So my thickest brush so I can really uh, cover a bigger area. And what I'm going to do is just squeeze the paint right onto the tip of the brush and just start putting it on. Now here's the thing with the first coat. Very important. Very important. First coat is a bridge coat. You do not want to try to change the color with the first coat of paint. All you're doing is kind of giving this first coat a chance to bite. And everything that follows is going to adhere to this first light coat of paint. It's going to dry quick and it's not going to react with the stuff underneath. Sometimes if you go throwing paints on, especially um, solvent based paint, but if you go slapping paint over a surface, you can have a reaction and uh, it, can, it can cause some, some issues with the later coats and uh, also can cause some issues with adhesion. So here by just whipping this bridge coat on and starting by the way only on the damaged areas. So don't try to cover the whole panel. Just put it on over the damaged areas and just brush it out. Try to get it nice and, and light. And so what we have now is a bridge coat and it's already tacky. This acrylic paint, as long as you're in a decent uh, room temperature, you know, or warmer, it's going to dry quick. Actually, the warmer you're, you are, if you're in a hot, humid garage, it's going to dry really quick. So be aware of that. Um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to start the second coat already. And so now a little bit thicker. And now instead of trying to brush out large areas, I'm going to try to stay focused, but still only 
really on the damaged parts. I'm not trying to recolor the whole panel yet, although there's so much damage on this panel that we are going to end up painting the whole thing. Normally you can just paint over the damage and blend it out, but there's so much damage here. Um, we're gonna paint the whole panel. So anyway, now I'm brushing it on thicker, only over the damage. I would call this a medium coat if the first coat was a light coat. By the way, the reason that we are painting over the damage here and not just recoloring the whole panel at once is the paint needs to be thicker over the damage to cover some of these black marks and scuff marks and that sort of thing. So what we're gonna end up doing is really blending the color out so it's going to be thicker over the damage and thinner uh, everywhere around it. And that's going to allow the color to kind of blend together instead of showing uh, patches. And you're still going to see some. I mean, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. But uh, you're still going to see some of that paint underneath. Now, at this point, I can see that that medium coat is wet. It's going to take just a little bit to flash off. It's not going to take long at all. But I want to take a moment to talk about painting over perforation. If you are painting over perforated areas and you're seeing that the holes are getting clogged with paint, uh, make sure you blow those out. You can use the brush and kind of poke them back through. Um, or you can blow really hard on the paint and sometimes blow it through the hole. But try to open that up. And that also says that you're kind of applying too much paint. So if you're applying so much that it's clogging the holes, pull back a little bit, spread that paint out a little bit more. Don't put as much on your brush. And um, yeah, just kind of tone it down a bit. Now while that blue is drying, we're going to go ahead and move over to the Bison logo. And I'm going to use this angled brush. I'm using uh, Lemon Yellow for this. And again, applying it directly to the brush. Now, um, I'm going to show you something. I'm doing this intentionally, okay? So I'm painting this eye with the Lemon Yellow. and. Uh, it's playing pretty good. By the way, you can use masking, masking tape and take these off. Uh, I just kind of cut in there with the brush and uh, don't worry too much about it. But if you want extra security, especially if you're painting like a stripe on your suit, you know, like let's say you're adding a stripe on your suit, you're gonna wanna mask it first, you know, put some masking tape down and then paint uh, around the stripe, right? Let the, let the tape dictate the shape. So. Here on the S, we've got a couple dark areas. And I've already deglazed these and sanded them down a little bit. And you can see that this lighter color, it's gonna take a lot really to cover the, uh, the dark points on this S. And what we could have done was put white down first. And I'm doing this by design because I wanted to show you what happens when you don't lay a white base coat. Uh, I will say this, this lemon yellow is actually thicker than I thought it would. It's actually covering better than I thought. Had I used the fluorescent yellow here, it would have really stood out. So um, anyway, something to think about. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just coloring this B because this color is not exactly the same as the yellow that's on the suit. So we're blending this so that the B doesn't just stand out as a different color. I'm just gonna put a little bit of the lemon yellow on it and kind of change the color a little bit just for uniformity's sake because this, I might be the only one that sees it, but it's gonna drive me nuts if I don't address it, right? So <laughs> there we go. All right, so I'm gonna let those dry. Got the bridge coat down, that's gonna dry pretty quick, but I'm gonna come back to the blue because it's gonna take several coats of blue on this torso. And uh, I don't want my brush to dry out too much, so Let's go ahead and just start on the next coat. Now at this point, on coat number three, I'm gonna start blending out around the damage. So I'm gonna take this next layer, just um, you know, about an inch outside of my last coat. That's gonna to start to blend that color, this, this new color, out to, into the factory color. That way, if there's any variance, it's going to start to uh, go away. We're going to start to see uniformity 
uh, between the factory color and this ultramarine master's touch paint. So there's our next coat of blue. And I think that the next one, we'll go ahead and co cover the whole panel and that should do it for that panel. I think we'll be happy with that. Now I'm gonna go back to the yellow here while the blue is drying. And let's see if we can get this with two coats. I think it's gonna take three. We go with this medium second coat here, but this lemon yellow really, uh, it covers well, especially compared to the fluorescence or the Angelus. The Angelus paints are just thinner. I found that they take more coats to cover. Um, and like I said, they're more expensive. So I think if you're using an airbrush or an HBLP, the Angelus is the way to go. Uh, this Master's Touch does not like being shot um, through the guns, but it does like being brushed on. So great for um, at-home repairs, simple repairs. And I'm going to tell you too, you can't really see the brush strokes. If you are careful and you use good brushes, like these Angelus uh, soft bristle brushes, you won't really see the brush strokes in there and it, it actually looks really good. So. Um, you can also use a foam brush probably. I've never used foam brushes with these, but I've thought about it. That should eliminate any strokes. All right, cool. I'm really happy with the way that that's looking, actually. We'll put a little bit more over here on the B. Just on this side. It's got some black marks there, some scuffs, so we'll cover those. Sweet. A little bit of scuff up here on the collar. Just wear. Touch that up while we got it out. The great thing about acrylic paint as well is that, um, you know, it's easy to use at home. You just clean it up with water. You don't need solvents or mineral spirits or anything. Just, just run it under a faucet and clean it up. Now our next coat here is uh, pretty tacky. I just stuck my hand in the yellow there and it was still wet. Uh, <laughs> but the blue is pretty tacky. It's about ready to go. So I'm going to try and finish this with just one more coat of paint. All right, so I would say at this point, the damage is probably not gonna cover much more than it is here. Um, I'm really hosing it on over the dark spots, uh, which I probably should do. I might gonna drag it out a little bit here, but I don't think it's gonna make much difference. Just like this uh, left panel, you're still gonna see some of the scuffs underneath with this color. Uh, this is kind of the nature of the color, but um, it still looks pretty good. Definitely better than it was. And there you have it. So we've got the INS covered with just a, just a couple coats. I would probably go ahead and put a third one on. You know what? The brush is still wet. I'm going to put a third one on there. But the blue is probably as good as it's going to get for that color. Oh, yeah, that third, that third coat definitely did it, especially over the damage. That was good. Didn't help that I stuck my finger in it uh, just a minute ago. So... <laughs> Cool. All right. Pretty happy with that. Okay, so we're back and we have a different type of suit here. Well, different color anyway. Whereas the last suit we did was blues and yellows. This one here is just black. And again, this is my son Carter's suit. Uh, he had a little bit of a slide on his rump. And what we have is just a, a cosmetic surface level scuff on a black suit. And I want to show you something really cool about black. This is why I always tell people, if you want a suit that's going to look good for years and years to come, uh, this is the way to go. What I have here is some Clean Freaks leather conditioner. This is what I use um, when doing any kind of conditioning. Uh, if I do a suit refurb or something, I like this Clean Freak stuff. It's a go-to for me. Now here on the butt, 
Uh, you can see this is a large scuff here. I'm gonna just apply some of the conditioner. I've already cleaned this with some leather cleaner and pulled any of the uh, you know dirt and uh, asphalt out of the scrape, but just conditioning it, you can see that the damage starts to disappear. Um, a couple coats of this and you'd be pretty, pretty much good to go. Um, you can still see the imperfections if you're up close, but this definitely improves it. Okay. So all the scuffs here, just going to lather that conditioner in there. Let it get in there. As you can see, it's looking pretty good. So recoloring black uh, sometimes doesn't require any recoloring at all, just conditioning and cleaning it. Uh, that's the great thing, the beautiful thing about black. Now, if you still are not happy with the results of that, you can always get some black leather dye. Um, again, I have an Angelus um, dye here. This is just jet black leather dye, and you just apply it with a cotton dauber and just dab right onto the leather. Actually, I'll just go ahead and do a spot here. <clears throat> go ahead and get the dauber and just work it right in. Now the thing about the dye is it's a little bit different color than the leather paint. So you can kind of see um, kind of a purplish hue once everything dries, but it definitely won't be that light color that you had with the scuffs. And yeah, like the paint, you just kind of want to blend it out. Now, normally I wouldn't have conditioned the leather and then put the dye on over the conditioner, <laughs> but this is my sun suit and it's not hurting anything. It just isn't optimal. Um, in terms of allowing the dye to absorb into the leather, you know? So, anyway, that definitely did the trick. There are no blemishes left. But if you want to take it a step further than that, then that's where you come into the, uh, the paint situation. And you just start, uh, you know, applying black paint. So, uh, it's as simple as that. You're... Step one with black is conditioner. Step two, you can dye it, uh, but it, it won't be as glossy. It's gonna have a little bit of a different hue. And then uh, of course you can come back over the top with black paint. So different options with black. So we're gonna set that aside and now we're gonna talk about changing a color altogether, okay? Um, what I have here are my son's Thor.2 gloves and we wanna change the gold. I'm going to change one of these segments to a fluorescent color, okay? What that means is I'm going to have to start with a white base because fluorescents do not like going over anything except white. They're just so thin and they're not really good for uh, changing the color of anything unless you're putting it over an existing white leather. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm not masking anything here because this is just for uh, the purpose of the video. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to use this wedge brush and again apply just a bridge coat here. I've deglazed this. I didn't sand it. I just cleaned it and deglazed it. Okay. But I'm going to apply a bridge coat, bridge coat first. I do recommend sanding, by the way, if you're changing a color. Again, for the intents of the video, uh, all I'm doing here is just showing how a color change takes place and the steps for applying a fluorescent color, color over an existing color. And I would also recommend if you're doing this type of job to mask off the finger sliders, for instance, and maybe the black around it, because it's such a tedious little piece that we're coloring. But um, I'm comfortable using the brush right up against the edges done a lot of car touch-up and pinstriping in my day, so uh, I'm not worried about this. This is right up my alley. But you may tape that off. 
So now we've got a bridge coat of white. We're going to let that dry and come back to it. All right, so I'm back and I have the glove here. I have put two coats of white on the finger and you can see that there. Um, so my second coat was a medium coat and we've got pretty good coverage now. The color for all intents and purposes is changed. And what I'm going to do now is apply some uh, neon. And this is really cheap stuff here. This is DecoArt Americana Neon Fluorescent Acrylic. Um, I figure, I've never used this, but I have it in my toolbox. If I can change the color with this, then you can do it with about anything. Because I, I say I haven't used this. I did, I bought this like, um, I don't remember where I was, maybe Brainerd, Minnesota. And uh, my options were very limited um, when it came to resources and buying acrylic paint that day. And I found this stuff and I used it on touch up. It worked okay, but it definitely isn't the best. So let's go ahead and apply this here. I got way too much on my brush, so I'm just going to dab it. And uh, the thing with fluorescence is you want them to be light. So that first bridge coat, I mean, is a light coat. And that's pretty much how you're going to run all of them and just keep adding on until it is bright and fluorescent. But you're gonna be able to see brush strokes in fluorescence. Uh, they're really gonna stand out. So you wanna keep the, uh, the material to a minimum to eliminate those brush, brush strokes as well. Um, geez, I really started with too much on my brush, but we're making it work. It is happening. And the first coat I'm going to tell you, this first coat of this paint is not good, uh, <laughs> but I know it's going to get better. I've been down this road before, but with any fluorescent, you put on that first coat and you're kind of like, oh, geez, this is not what I expected. It is going to take some coatings to build up to what you want. Um, it's kind of like candy paint on a, on a car. Uh, the first couple coats, you, you hardly see anything if you're applying it right, and then it starts to really pop, and then all of a sudden... It just all comes in, comes together. So I uh, got a little bit too much paint right there. Still some brush strokes. So remove that. And we're starting to get orange, but it sure is not fluorescent, right? So let's let that dry for a little bit. We'll come back to it. I'm also not sure how this stuff dries. If it's going to be great in terms of uh, like if it's going to dry as fast. As the other did. I'm just going to remove some excess here. Tell you, it's just it's so important to have this fluorescent on thin. You do not want to overdo it. All right, I'm back after a few minutes. We've got a um, pretty tacky surface here. Take I've still got paint left on my brush because I put too much on the first time. So let's just go ahead and start putting it on. And oh man, already the second coat looks way better. Um, but I'm going to lighten it out too. So maybe shouldn't get too excited. This paint here is a lot thinner than the Master's Touch, even the fluorescent Master's Touch. And you'll find that the fluorescent paints are just thinner in general. But this one in particular just feels really cheap, for lack of a better term. I can definitely see it's going to brighten up. So we are getting there slowly but surely. That is coat number two. Coat number two. Uh, it's orange. It's orange, I guess. Okay, so it's time to put another coat of paint on the glove. Oh, jeez. This paint either comes out really quick or it doesn't at all. All right, so I actually applied two coats now, uh, two thicker coats. So this is coat number three. After three coats now, you can see uh, it's working pretty well. Um, we do have some darker spots over here, so I'm going to try to load them up. All right, it's time to put our fourth and final coat on this glove segment. This one I'm going to go ahead and put on a lot heavier because this color is not covered well. Oh, 
Hopefully this starts to give us the pop we're looking for with the fluorescent. But I really think this is as bright as this particular color is going to get. Okay, so there we have it. We've got a segment changed from the darker gold to the brighter orange. And again, I'm still not thrilled with the actual color change, but I wanted to do an extreme, a fluorescent from a darker color. And I also wanted to use just the worst product that I had. So you can see a worst case scenario, quote unquote. And there you go. I don't think it's too bad, but it definitely could be better with an Angelus brand fluorescent paint. All right, everybody, so there you have it. We changed the color on this glove, that little segment, uh, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. You can apply those same concepts and recolor large portions of your gear, your suit, your boots, your gloves. All it's gonna take is a little bit more materials and a little bit more time and patience. One thing I will say, if you're uh, going to change the color on, let's say, an entire panel on the suit, you may wanna use an HVLP gun, mask everything off and spray the product as opposed to brushing it. You can use the brush, it's just gonna be pretty tedious. So I wanna thank everybody for watching. If this video helped you, if you found it educational, please click the like button on it. This gets the video in front of more motorcycle enthusiasts. And be sure to click the subscribe button and the bell for notifications because we always have educational videos coming out. We've got a lot more stuff planned and some cool stuff as well, including rider profiles and techniques. So thank you all for watching. As we say every time, go fast, be safe, and we'll see you in the next one.